Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to transplant this little, uh, I got it as a little cutting, it's a Monstera Dubia, and uh, it's a shingling Monstera, and uh, I really enjoy it. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like over here. Uh, this is actually just a juvenile form. The adult one, as it gets bigger, uh, the leaves get bigger and they look more like a Monstera with the splits and the fenestrations. So, uh, yeah, right now, I, I've been wanting to transplant this one for weeks for weeks, but it just gets put on the side burner, it's doing okay. The reason why I wanted to transplant it so much was because, from what I understand, if the little Monstera dubia doesn't have anything to support it, um, it just produces a long kind of tendril, like, uh, kind of like a, um, a Hoya will do, well, just a long expanse with no leaves, and you're like, where are the leaves? So usually when it gets to the end of a support, It'll do the, the, little, uh, the little tendrils, try to find something to hook onto, and then once it hooks onto something, it starts producing leaves again. So I really wanted to produce a, uh, a pole, so I made a little moss pole. It's not necessary to even use a, a moss pole. I, I just made this out of a, a piece of wood that we had laying around. I think it's a piece of cedar. Uh, we made a little window box for our shed, and uh, so yeah, I took some sphagnum moss, and I used some... Um, uh, fishing line, the, uh, uh, yeah, fishing line, monofilament, or whatever it's called. Anyway, uh, and I wrapped it on top, so it's, it's nice and secure in there. Again, you don't need to put the moss on there. It would, it would gladly just attach to the, <clears throat> to the, uh, to the wood. But I just wanted a little extra moisture there, uh, just in case it wanted it. I'm not 100% sure, but I do see them just, uh, on just the wood. But I've seen them like this, and I thought that I like this better. So anyway, I've got a, a cute little pot. It doesn't have to be a huge pot right away. I don't even think it needs to be a huge pot anyway because it's mostly going to be growing on this. Um, but it'll look nicer in a pot. Um, and then I'm going to bring you down and we'll, we'll do this. Anyway, before we get started, I just wanted to show you what I'm going to use for soil. What plant did we do this with? I think it was the um, Alocasia poly uh, rejuvenation. I've got leftover soil from that. So this is... Um, uh, just a, um, it's a Pro Mix BX all-purpose soil mix uh, mixed in with um, with some coconut husk chips, the uh, the bark uh, that adds extra airflow in there, and uh, I also put some slow release fertilizer. So slow release fertilizer is nice for me because I forget to fertilize all the time, uh, especially with my house plants. So anyway, I've got enough soil here. Uh, it's kind of pre-moistened. I just mixed it up before um, before we started, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get down. We can uh, we can get this started. Okay, so what I also have here, I've also got um, that uh, Velcro um, Velcro ties. We're gonna need this. Well, you don't need this. You can use anything. You can use a string. You can use whatever. But when I plant the the plant, I want to make sure that I secure the uh, the little tendril. I'm calling it a tendril. It's not a tendril. The stem to the to the moss. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm going to set this moss pole up, and I'm just gonna add some soil in. I can just fill this pot right up because this little plant is so small. Um, I normally, if you well, if you watch my videos, I normally put a piece of paper towel in the bottom. But this particular pot has a uh, a saucer that's attached, so I don't really need to do that. I don't need to add the paper towel. The soil is not going to go anywhere. I just want to make sure that the uh, the board is nice and secured. So I'm adding some soil all the way around it. Make sure it doesn't fall over. Chances are it's not going to go outside, it's not going to have the wind, but I want, as the plant gets a little bit bigger, to be supported. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that the moss was touching the soil so that it will wick the water up from the soil up into the pole. Um, if I had the divide, if, if there was a little bit of space before the, um, the moss started, uh, the soil and then a space and then the moss, it wouldn't be able to wick it up, but it, it will be able to do that now. So there we go, we got a nice full pot, make a little divot because I don't know what the root system is going to look like on this little Monstera. Got a little plant tag. So let's, uh, let's take this out of the pot, shall we? A little nervous. Originally, 
originally uh, there was no little drainage hole. I ended up poking this in the bottom because it was swimming. It was swimming in water. And I was worried that there might be root rot. Uh, and uh, I was hoping it wouldn't die. So I'm just removing everything from here. There's not a lot of root system. This guy's probably not going to have a substantial root system anyway, just because of the way that it grows. It's going to cling to the to the the pole, uh, but it does have a nice white root system. I don't know whether you're able to see it there on my fingers. I'm not going to clean it off completely. And now I'm just going to bring this back into frame. I'm going to plant this as closely, finding where the roots are. I'm going to plant it as closely to the uh, to the pole as I can. I'm going to tuck those little roots in the soil. I'm going to make sure to cover them up. I want the, the roots to be nice and secure in there. I don't want them to feel like they're bouncing around. Why am I using the old soil? <laughs> oh. I nearly pulled it out of the pot again. Okay, he's nice and secure. We're going to leave him like that. Or her, I'm not sure. And now I'm just going to move the camera again and we can get a better angle of uh, of supporting this little stem. Alright, so now I want to make sure that it's got good contact. There's going to be a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, give to the moss so I can I can do it a little bit tighter just so that it, it feels nice and snug. I don't want it to feel like it's rocking and rolling. Uh, so this um, this velcro stuff is really good because it has the soft side to it so I'm not worried about uh, it being too abrasive against the plant. I'm also going to put one up near the uh, the top as well. And the good thing about also with the Velcro is uh, is when uh, when it starts to grow and I don't need it down here anymore. I don't need to cut it off and and start fresh. I can just reuse it. I can I can take it off here where it's not needed anymore, and then put it up here up here where it might be a little bit more needed. So this is the little, let me bring the, the camera up again. So this is the little Monsteria dubia all planted up. Uh, hopefully it likes its new little uh, situation and I hope to see new leaves starting to develop. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll start to see an, another leaf grow. I'll put this back in the grow tent um, and see what happens. It seems to like it in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, once it starts to develop leaves, I'll show you again. We'll do another update and uh, yeah, hopefully it won't take too, too long. Anyway, until next time, you guys. Oh, show me if you're growing any of these shingling plants. I'd love to see uh, yours. Post them on or tag me on Instagram or uh, or on Facebook, uh, Plants and Things What's Growing page. I'd love to see them. They're really, really cool. They're really, really fun. I have another one, Raphidophora Ahayi, I think. H-A-Y-I. Uh, super cute. Uh, doesn't have the same coloration. I really like the coloration. Again, we'll see a photo in the corner. I'll show you again because it's really cool. Uh, of the uh, the dubia, and I uh, can't wait till it gets to look like that. Uh, fingers crossed that happens in the next couple of months. They're fairly quick. So anyway, until next time, you guys. Happy growing.